Summer is good for only two things, taking your telescope down to the beach and hoping that you don't get caught again, and photographing infrared light in order to emulate the weird and wonderful colours of Kodak Aerochrome. See, you're not supposed to photograph in the middle of the day, and I always resented the fact that no one would think I'm cool anymore if I shoot after the morning light. So I had to find a way in which I could photograph in the middle of the day whilst protecting my cool dude persona that I definitely have. But the beauty of Aerochrome is that it actually has to be shot in the middle of the day, when the most infrared light is present in the atmosphere. To keep from treading over old warm ground, I'll assume you already know all there is to know about Kodak Aerochrome already. After all, if you're watching this, you've likely seen all the other videos about it on YouTube, and you're currently scraping the bottom of the barrel. Or maybe not. Maybe you're not weirdly obsessive like my ex-girlfriend keeps insisting on telling me I am. The brief summary is that it makes plants and foliage red, gives the blue sky a very deep blue tone, and leaves everything else pretty much unsoiled. Oh, apart from clothes, it renders everyone's clothes red too for some reason. It makes all the colours acid trippy like this because it's capturing infrared light. And unfortunately, just like with most film nowadays, Kodak Aerochrome is stupidly expensive. We're talking hundreds of dollars a roll expensive, because Kodak stopped making this stuff back in 2009. So now it's even rarer than getting me to take a shower. Before this infrared art fades into obscurity, we need to find a way to get the look right in camera. None of that Photoshop stuff, that's cheating, and it's not photography. Now there's multiple ways to emulate these results, all of which are a massive pain in the arse, so you have been warned. First you can just use any modern camera that will give you a live view, along with an infrared filter over the front of your lens. These filters vary in their different values of infrared that they let through, and your results will vary accordingly. The problem being that regular cameras actively filter out the IR and UV light from the spectrum before hitting the sensor. Typically with our cameras we're only interested in visible light of course, and infrared isn't visible. This means you won't be able to see much light at all, therefore you'll need a tripod, long shutter speeds, or sometimes even a really high ISO if you want to attempt shooting handheld. Although you should only hope to hit around 1 60th of a second, and you'll often have a lot of grain and blur not conducive to the sharp detailed images that your Instagram buddies have come to expect from you. To rectify this, infrared photographers often plump for having a camera converted into a full spectrum camera, meaning it can see the full light spectrum from ultraviolet all the way up to infrared. The advantage of this is that you can easily adjust the wavelength of infrared light you shoot merely by applying a filter. For instance, a 550 nanometer filter will grab you that wavelength and everything above it but it'll block out all the wavelengths below. With different filters you get different effects, all with a single full spectrum camera and an array of different filters. There's a handy chart on this website to show you which nanometer filter should yield which results. For instance, if you were to use a 550 nanometer filter, then you'd get this result straight out of camera. And a 590 nanometer filter would yield you these results. After that you can get into the realms of channel swapping on Photoshop, but we're aiming to get Aerochrome straight out of camera. 
the benefit here is that unlike with regular cameras, shooting a full spectrum camera can shoot at regular shutter speeds handheld. You can straight up buy one of these cameras like I did, or you can take one of your old cameras and get it sensor converted. I bought this Fujifilm XA5 fully converted with a lens for around 300 doubloons. It's noteworthy that if you want to take normal shots with these full spectrum cameras, you'll have to sieve out the UV and IR light again with a filter, and even then it can be a little janky. Similar to NDs, you can get a variable filter, but these make it difficult to see which wavelength you're shooting at so I recommend specific filters for specific wavelengths. You'll soon get to know which filters yield which results. And you've got the live view on your camera anyway, so just put a bit of effort into something for once in your life. Once you have your full spectrum camera, you just slap on your desired IR filter of choice and use one of these white balance cards to help your camera stick its white balance. Full spectrum cameras struggle with that so it's best to set it manually. I tend to use the grey card and then adjust the blues and reds of the white balance to get the desired effect. There is a filter that's been specifically designed to get the aerochrome shots in camera, but as tempting as it is, it's stupidly expensive. Might still be worth a pick up one day though, because if it works, it'll get us those incredible aerochrome shots with little to no effort. In the meantime, I'm trying to make an aerochrome filter myself using these Lee gel filters. These are basically sheets of transparent coloured plastic that you can cut to size and place over your lens using something like a polarizer filter. They come in varying colours and the ones I've tried out so far are filter 117 peacock blue, but this gave much more of a pinkish, orangey type tone. So I tried out the 729 scuba blue filter instead. This is closer and it's how I shot the photos you've seen in this video, but it's still not aerochrome, nowhere near really. We want those deep blues and really vivid reds, and this is still way too pinkish. They still look cool, but being able to nail those aerochrome reds in camera would be incredible. So I'm putting this out there to the two of you that are watching this video. Have you tried this? Any other filters that you recommend to get the desired look? I'll keep trying, but I might just end up blowing even more of my money on that Kalari Vision filter. If I can Frankenstein something together on the cheap, then I'd much rather do that though. I am in a serious amount of photography debt. <laughs>